So far, we have been talking about data simulation in deterministic model, deterministic static, deterministic dynamics. With respect to deterministic models, what is the basis? The model is perfect. The model can be static or dynamic. To do data simulation, I need observations. When we did the static deterministic model, even though we recognize that observations in general are corrupted by noise, to make things simple, we assumed as if the observations did not, did not have any noise. But when we came to the dynamic data simulation, deterministic perfect model assumption, we assumed the observations are noisy and we knew the observational covariance. So, with this, we have pretty much completed data simulation into static deterministic and dynamic deterministic models. The next topic is a model can be stochastic, the model can be static and dynamic, model can also be stochastic. So, what does it mean? I am going to now start with uh, uh, static stochastic model dynamic stochastic model stochasticity randomness randomness where does the randomness comes into being randomness essentially comes from one observation noise another one randomness comes from model may have a random forcing function what is the reason why we consider model forcing Sometimes models are approximations of reality. The model captures pretty much good aspect of the physics, but still there are some leftover processes that are not accounted for. The leftover unaccounted terms is called the model errors. It is not uh, if we know what the error we are committing, we would have always taken that into account. It is not acceptable for one to know that I have committed the error and not correct the error. So, when somebody says this is the model that essentially gives the, 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 the complete understanding of the model at that time, but whatever be the model you may want to account for unaccounted terms that is called the model error. One way to simplify the, 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 the incorporation of model errors is to assume the model errors are random. So, addition of randomized version of model errors makes the model stochastic. Considering the observation noise makes the observation also random or stochastic. So, we are going to move into a newer realm where the stochastic stochasticity in the observation as well as stochasticity in the model errors both could be part of our analysis. So, when we were going from deterministic to stochastic, the principles of data simulation has to depend on statistical probabilistic ideas. I am assuming the readers are familiar with basic fundamental concepts of from probability theory. So, under that assumption, I am now going to build some of the basic tools from statistical estimation theory that one needs to be able to perform data simulation into static and dynamic stochastic models. So, that gives rise to the mathematical background that underlie statistical estimation theory. Please remember from the first lecture data simulation can be thought of as regression, data simulation can be thought of as estimation. So, estimation within the deterministic context is what we finished talking about. Estimation within the stochastic context is what we are moving into. So, the first topic in module 6 is called principles of statistical estimation. It is the preparatory work that we need to uh, uh, do to gain an understanding of the fundamental principles involved in statistical theory. So, this is a part of the mathematical requirement 
please go back we have already talked about uh, uh, finite, finite tensile vector space, matrix theory, multivariate calculus, optimization theory, matrix methods, optimization algorithms. Now, I am going to be talking about statistical estimation algorithm. So, you may see this course is heavy in mathematics. Why this is heavy in mathematics? Because that is what data simulation is all about. If you do not understand the mathematics, we may not be able to get to the crux of the algorithm that underlie the data simulation process itself. It is very easy to be able to use the algorithm that somebody developed, but in addition to be able to use the algorithm that somebody develops, if you want to be able to venture into the new world of being able to develop newer methods, you need to understand the models, the algorithms uh, under the models, the data and the process of bringing the model to data which is essentially an engineering process in my view and this engineering process involves lots of mathematical preliminaries and that is why our approach is quite mathematical. So, with that preamble I would like to be able to uh, describe the fundamental principles of statistical, statistical estimation. So, I am going to pose the estimation problem. Let x be an unknown vector to be estimated. X is called the state or the true state. I want to know the temperature in the city of Bangalore this afternoon at 3 o'clock. I want to be able to estimate that is the unknown. The true, true temperature I not known I would like to be able to estimate this. Often times x is not directly observable. The state of the system may or may not be directly observable, but a function of the state may be directly observable. Therefore, z is called the observation. The observation is related to the true state by a function z is equal to h of x. We already know that. We have utilized this uh, time and again. So, R n is a model space. X is the model state. Z is an observation vector. We have the observation space which is R R m. H is the map from the model space to the observation space. H essentially refers to the measurement system. If H is linear, Z is equal to H of X. If H is nonlinear, you simply have Z is equal to H of X. That is what we have. These are very familiar territory for us because we have used this several times over. The problem. Knowing z, I want to be able to best, I want to get a best estimate x hat of x. So, z, we know z is related to h, but h, uh, z is related to x, x is not directly observable, a function of x is observable. So, knowing z, I would like to be able to estimate x. Where does the stochasticity, stochasticity comes into play? there is an additive observation noise. We are going to assume this noise is uh, mean 0 Gaussian with the known covariance. I will also like to be able to generalize what we have been doing. So far we have been thinking about x as a state deterministic, but the state itself could be random. Therefore, we are having an observation z, z is random in two ways because the unknown itself is random. If the unknown is fixed dynamic uh, is fixed that is called static model. If the unknown x is fixed, but it is random. What do you mean by fixed, but random? It is a random variable. It value can be different based on a particular distribution we just do not know what is the distribution based on which the values of x is selected. The distribution is the distribution that mother nature chooses. So, x the unknown is random, the state is random, the noise is random. So, z is random. So, given a random observation I would like to be able to recover the 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 x. So, x hat is the estimate of the unknown x. B 
because x and v are random I am going to simplify matters assume x and v are uncorrelated. So, x is a random variable that represents the natural variation for example, this year in some parts of the world the temperature is warmer than usual in the winter in some parts of the world it is wetter than normal and th these variations are related to a phenomenon called El Nino and, and uh, El Nino occurs with some rhythm over time. So, many of the weather variables around the world have a natural variation associated with them. So, that is what the distribution of x is all about. So, x could be the temperature in a specific region of the world that I want to estimate and x is a random variable is subjected to certain natural variability controlled by other events that happens around the world. These are observations in addition to the underlying uh, uh, natural variability there is also an observational error. So, given the observation z I would like to be able to have a realization an estimate of the realization of x that is x hat. So, v is the noise noise is normally distributed E of v is 0 the covariance of v is r. So, x is the unknown I have assumed um, um, x in general could be random. So, if you look into the statistical literature this stochastic estimation problem there are two competing schools of thoughts one is the Fisher school another is the Bayesian school. Within the Fisher school x is assumed to be a deterministic constant and it is mu but unknown. Fisher developed a method called maximum likelihood estimation technique to estimate mu and Fisher's technique lies uh, Fisher's technique one can call it as a point estimation because mu is a point in a vector space of dimension n because n is the dimension of the state vector x. So, I am interested in estimating an unknown value of the vector mu and mu is a deterministic constant. So, Fisher formulated this problem as, as a point estimation problem and he developed a method of what is called maximum likelihood estimate. As opposed to Fisher's approach that is called the Bayesian approach. Within the context of Bayesian approach x is considered to be random x is said to have a prior distribution. The prior distribution captures the natural variability of x. So, if x denotes the temperature distribution around the world the temperature distribution around the world is subjected to climatic conditions. The climatic conditions itself vary in some rhythmic fashion therefore, we, we can predict to some degree of accuracy the, 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 the natural variability in x and this natural variability is captured as prior distribution. Now, given z so there is a particular that is a prior distribution relates to our belief as to what x would be or x is z is the actual state. So, we so for example, in this current year um, we know we are under the grip of El Nino. So, we know under El Nino what kind of temperature variations could take place even though we have a prediction from the based on the prior which are climatic data we make an actual measurement z. So, z contains some new information x the prior contains some old information I would like to be able to combine them the prior and the new information to get what is called the posterior distribution. E is random in this case mu is expected value of x expectation is taken with respect to the prior distribution. So, you can think of x being a constant and x being random these are two complementary points of view as it exists in statistical estimation theory. So, given a function h and assumptions about x and v as, as, as we have done 
I would like to be able to now concoct a function phi which is Rm to Rn. What is Rm? Z belongs to Rm. Please remember that. Z belongs to Rm. Z contains information. What is Rn? Rn x is in Rn. So, I would like to be able to transfer information from Z to x. Z is known, x is not known. I have to transfer information from Z to x. This information transfer I am going to uh, 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 represent through a function phi that maps from Rn, Rm to Rn. So, phi of z is equal to x hat. So, phi is a process by which I, 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 um, uh, by I analyze the observation the output is x bar. So, you can think of it like this phi is the process into which you give the observation outcomes x hat an estimate of the unknown. So, if phi generates x hat which is the estimate of x based on z phi is called an estimator. So, estimator is a map from the observation space into the model space. So, what are the examples given the reflectivity from the radar that is z I would like to be able to find the amount of rain. So, the state of the system is rain but the measurement is reflectivity which is z. In this case z is random. So, phi of z is a function of a random variable. So, x hat is random. So, the estimate x hat is a random variable. The goal is to be able to obtain probabilistic characterization of the estimate. What are the probabilistic characterization estimate? So, there are two things. First, we need to be able to concoct a way to design phi that will output x hat an estimate of the unknown x. Once it puts out an estimate, we have to talk about and, and x hat is, is, is random. We need to be able to talk about the probabilistic characteristics of x hat. A complete probability characterization involves knowing the entire distribution of x bar sometimes it is often difficult to get that. In lieu of that sometimes we will be content with knowing what is the mean, what is the covariance. So, the problem of characterizing the properties of x hat is the problem that is associated with statistical estimation. If phi is a linear function of z then x is called the linear estimate otherwise it is non-linear. So, estimate can be either linear or non-linear. So, what is the summary of that? I have a unknown x which could be random. There is a natural variability, there is a prior distribution. I make observations. Observations are also corrected by noise. I know the distribution of the observation. I want to be able to combine the distribution prior with the given distribution to be able to get the 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 property the probability characterization of x hat. So, I want to be able to design an estimator an estimator could be either a linear estimator or a non-linear estimator. So, in Fisher's approach x is fixed constant. So, x is equal to x is equal to h x plus v v is randomized um, uh, v, v is Gaussian random. Therefore, the probability density function of z given x is again a normal distribution. The mean of z is normal distribution which h x as the mean and r is the covariance. So, if x is deterministic the randomness in z comes precisely from the randomness in v and h x is added to v v is 0 mean and a covariance or if you add a deterministic quantity to a random quantity it simply shifts the mean without changing the covariance and that is essentially that is essentially the the analysis that we have given in this discussion. In this case there are two approaches to estimation one is called the maximum likelihood estimation another is the least square estimation. In the Bayesian approach 
bx uh, pfx has as as uh, is called the prior distribution it is the belief that we had about the unknown the natural variability i would like you to think of it as a as a as a as a information that we have on climate that is the prior information. Then act, when you start taking the actual observation the actual observation has a conditional distribution. So, given x given a particular realization of x the observation has a distribution that is called the conditional distribution generally that is known prior is given. So, I can now compute the joint distribution p of x of z p of x of z by simple rule unconditional probability is conditional of z with respect with given x times p of x or it can be written as conditional of x with z given z with respect to p z. By equating these two we can now see p x of z is given by the product of p z given x times p x by p z. p z is the prob is the is the dense probability density of the observation it can be expressed as the integral of the integral of the uh, 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 joint joint density which is pxz with respect to x if you integrate the joint density with respect to x you get pz so this relation is has come to be called the bayes rule so what does the bayes rule say if you know the prior if you give me the prior if you also tell me the conditional distribution of the observation I can combine them to get this and this is what is called the posterior. So, what does it mean I am updating the prior prior is the belief before I came into the game when I started playing the game I got observation the observation gives me some new information the new information helps me to revise my old belief. So, the new belief is called the posterior. So, the old belief changes to a new belief by virtue of getting new information through observations. When p x z the posterior is computed within the Bayesian setup we could use this we could use this in a variety of ways we could compute the mean we could compute the covariance we can make lots of, uh, uh, of, of uh, 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 analysis with respect to different properties of, of, of x based on the posterior distribution. So, these are the two competing approaches to statistical estimation in one form the stochasticity arising purely from observation noise the unknown is fixed the other one the unknown is also random the noise also further corrupts the observation in this case I have a posterior I have a conditional distribution the combi the process of combining the posterior with the conditional distribution is the one that gives you uh, 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 the prior and the conditional distribution when combined gives you the posterior. So, posterior is the new belief posterior is the revised belief posterior is the one that we should use in our in our in our decision process. So, now we have talked about the need for creating estimates unknown estimates of the unknown be it random or, 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 or deterministic. There are several properties of the estimate one has to be concerned with one is called unbiasedness another is called the relative efficiency of the estimate if we have to understand what is called an efficient estimate we have to understand what is called consistency in estimation. Uh, a consistency of the estimate we also need to worry about what is called sufficiency of the estimate. So, these are all these are all the norms against which estimates are evaluated as if we can induce as many of these properties into the estimate as possible those estimates are better estimates. For example, I would like to be able to have an unbiased estimate I would like to be able to have a relative well, the efficient estimate I would also like to have a consistent estimate. So, while data simulation is an in, in, in principle is an estimation problem within the context of stochastic estimation we need to be aware of different properties the estimates will possess and the properties that the estimates possess 
depends on the design of the estimator the function phi. So, how do you define design a function phi the estimator such that the estimate is unbiased efficient consistent and so on. So, statistical analysis has been concerned with the development of this theory for well over a century there is a very well established body of literature. So, if you want to be able to uh, 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 become uh, uh, an expert in the area of stochastic data simulation problem or, or randomized uh, stochastic data simulation pro randomized or stochastic data simulation problems you need to be cognizant of very many fundamental results from this contemporary uh, uh, statistical literature. So, you can see how different areas of applied mathematics are, are going to be involved in, in, in trying to make this area of data simulation work. So, I am now going to define what is called unbiased. When do I say the estimate is unbiased? Unbiasedness relate, relates to the relative location of the mean of the sampling distribution. So, let us talk about that now. So, there are lots of little things in here sampling distribution. So, let me first talk about the notion of a sampling distribution. Suppose I have a coin I do not know whether the coin I do not know the probability with which the coin falls head or tail. Let p be the probability with which the coin falls head. So, 1 over 1 minus p will be the probability it falls tail. I want to be able to estimate this p what do we do we conduct experiments. We conduct experiments in which we do n tosses I am going to n tosses. Then I am going to compute how many of these n tosses a head turned up. So, n h is the number of tosses where head turned up n t where the number of process uh, tosses where the tail turned up and that is equal to n. So, what is the estimate of p? p is essentially given by n h by n. This estimate becomes so let us assume we have picked n is equal to 1000. So, I first conduct an experiment I get the first estimate p 1 which is given by the estimate p 1 given by the first set of 1000 experiments. Now, let, let us conduct a second set of 1000 experiments again n remains the same n h the number of times it falls head in the first set of 1000 tosses and the second set of 1000 tosses need not be the same. So, let me call that as p 2 of hat let us consider this as p l of hat. So, what is that we are trying to do I am trying to fix n as 1000 we are conducting an experiment on estimating the probability that the coin the chosen coin falls head I am doing L experiments I let us assume L is 100 in the first set of 1000 I compute the number of heads I get p 1 in the second set of 1000 experiments I can I count the number of heads I get p 2 it turns out you can it is you can very easily see the number of even though the total number of tosses remains the same the number of heads in each chunk of 1000 tosses need not be the same, but they will be slightly different. So, p 1 in general need not be equal to p 2 in general it need not be equal to p l. So, if I now plot the value that p 1 p 2 p l takes they will take different points in a real line this is 0 this is 1. P, L, uh, p is in, in between that. So, they will take different values uh, there will be 100 points. Now, we can divide this interval where this lies into different bins. We can then compute the number of times the p hat lies in here we can put a bar we can put a bar we can put a bar we can put a bar. So, the bar refers to the number of times the estimate has fallen into that bin. So, this is called the histogram. 
the histogram essentially refers to the sampling distribution of the estimate p hat. So, please remember p is the constant unknown p hat is the estimate of p p hat is random because p hat depends on the number of tosses. So, p hat the estimate so this is the estimator this is the estimator this estimator gives you an estimate the estimate is a random variable if I repeated this experiment l times I get l different values of this estimate because it, it is it is random they are distributed in a range I can then bin this range and compute the number of times the values of p falls in each of these I can compute what is called the histogram the histogram gives you the sampling distribution the histogram is an approximation for the sampling distribution. So, what is the sampling distribution the distribution of the estimate condition of the fact the unknown is x in this case the unknown x is p x hat is p hat. So, even though the 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 the, the probability that the coin falls head p is fixed unknown its estimate varies estimate has a distribution that is what is called the sampling distribution. It stands it, it stands to reason to ex expect that the expected value of this random variable uh, of this estimate which is a random variable the conditional expectation of x hat given x is equal to x when x is a constant. The conditional expectation of x x hat with respect to x. So, in the in the first case x is a constant in the second case x is random. So, nature picks x from the prior distribution. So, this is the expectation with respect to the prior. The second one is the sampling distribution that that is related to the randomness arising from sampling. Therefore, we would expect uh, my estimator x hat to be such that the expectation with respect to the prior of the conditional expectation of x hat with respect to x must be equal to e of x hat must be equal to e of x. What is e of x is the mean of the original random variable x with respect to the prior. So, that is so these are the two conditions for unbiasedness that is the, they are very natural conditions for unbiasedness. If an estimate is not biased uh, is not unbiased there is a bias the difference between the expected value of x and the x that is called the bias or the difference between the expected value of x hat and e of x is called the bias. We also know bias arises in other ways for example, if you have an voltmeter if you have been using the voltmeter for a long time the properties change. So, if the actual voltage is 15 degrees it may show it may always underestimate this that could be an error of minus 2. So, that is called bias there the bias in the reading of the instruments that can be corrected by calibration. You can calibrate a meter against the standard we can correct the bias, but in here the bias arises because of the way I estimate bias is the property of the estimator. So, what is the desirable attribute of an estimator an estimator is a desirable estimator is one where the output of the estimator which is an estimate the estimate must be unbiased. Since we are considering two alternate cases where x could be deterministic or random in the case of deterministic uh, x the conditional expectation of x hat given x must be x in the case of random this repeated expectation the expectation of the prior expectation with respect to prior of the conditional expectation must be equal to the expectation the of, of x the, the, the that is the mean of the prior. So, that is the condition we should always seek to force unbiasedness in the estimates. Again a coin toss an experiment if I want to coin I am going back to the coin tossing experiment event hrt p q 1 minus p 
given the results of m independent tosses I assumed m is 1000 in my illustration E of z is p, I'm, I'm, I'm going to E of z is p variance of z is p q these results you may ask oh, where does it come from it comes from the standard binomial distribution z takes the value 1 when it falls head z takes the value 0 when it falls tail. So, 1 with the probability p 0 with the probability q. So, in our notation z i is equal to p plus v i z i is equal to p plus v i z i is equal to p plus v i v i is equal to 1 minus p with the probability p it is equal to minus p with the probability q. Therefore, the expectation value of v i is 0 based on this calculation the variation of uh, the variance of v i is p q as it should be and the x value of z i is p the variance of z i is p q that is what comes out of this. So, we calculate the properties of v and then we calculate the properties of z. These are simple calculations that come from fundamental analysis. Now, I am going to uh, 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 talk about estimation of the sample mean. Now, that we have seen two different formulations of the estimation problem the Fisher's formulation and the Bayesian formulation and we have also seen the definition of what unbiasedness and what is the measure of bias is all about. We are going to illustrate the, the concept of bias uh, uh, using a yeah, simple coin tossing experiment. So, example 13.2.1 uh, 13.2.1 is taken from our book Lakshmi Rahan, Lewis and Dahl uh, dynamic data simulation published in 2006. Consider a coin tossing experiment the events are coin falling head or tail the probability of head is p the probability of tail is q 1 minus p we are assuming p is a constant. So, we are following the Fisher's framework given the results of m independent tosses of a coin in the previous illustration I used m is equal to 1000. Uh, we would like so the, the 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 estimate we would like to be able to <coughs> get an estimate uh, uh, of of p the observations are z z is equal to 1 when it falls head z is equal to 0 when it falls tail the probability of head is p probability of tail is q therefore the expected value of is z expected value of z is uh, p the variance of z is p q uh, anybody who has done basic probability theory and statistics uh, should be able to recognize that this is a simple example of a uh, binomial uh, 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 Bernoulli random variable which is taking two values head or tail. So, we are going to rewrite this in our notation in our notation observations are z, z is equal to p plus uh, uh, v i p is the unknown v i is the noise, uh, 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 noise the unknown p is to be estimated the observations is the sum of, 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 of the value of the unknown p plus the, 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 the noise v i in order to be able to make sure the uh, 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 z matches with the previous uh, uh, description we are going to concoct a noise v i is equal to 1 minus p with probability p v i is equal to minus p with the probability q with this uh, first we are going to compute the expectation and the variance of v i the expectation and the variance of v i uh, expectation of v i is 0 the variance of v i is p q once I know the mean and the variance of, of, of v i since z i is a sum of a constant plus a random variable adding p to v i simply shifts the mean. So, the mean of e i uh, z i is, is p the variance of z i is p q. So, this is the fundamental result that comes from probability theory if you add a constant to a random variable the distribution of the sum is the same as the distribution of the original uh, random variable except that the variance remains the same, but the mean is shifted. 
that is the basic idea in here. So, I am now going to talk about the estimation problem. I am going to perform m experiments m could be 1000 z i s are the results of the tossing coin at the i th toss. Please remember z i takes value 0 or 1. Um, so, the sum of z i i running from 1 to m is equal to the total number of uh, uh, times the head came. The total number of head divided by m is an estimate of the unknown the estimate is characterized by p hat. This p hat is a random variable p hat has an underlying distribution that distribution is called the sampling distribution. It can now be verified e of p hat is equal to expectation of the sum is the sum of the expectations therefore, e of p hat is equal to the average of the expectations of the i random variable z i running from 1 to m. The average of each z i is p as it was shown in the previous slide. So, the average of the the, the expected value of the uh, uh, estimate is equal to the true value that means this estimate p hat is unbiased. unbiased variance of p hat variance of the sum is equal to sum of the variances if the random variables are independent in this particular case th that is the result that comes from basic statistics and probability theory and uh, here we are concerned with the sum of the results of independent uh, tosses the tosses are independent therefore there is no correlation between two successive uh, uh, results of the two successive tosses. Therefore, the variance of p hat is given by expected value average minus its the average this is the random variable which is the average of the which is the estimate this is equal to p hat as you, you can see p hat minus p whole square expected value of that this from basic probability theory relating to the properties of expectation expectation of the sum is sum of the expectations. So, this reduces to 1 over m square times the sum of the variances of the individual term. The variance of each individual term is p q I am adding m times. So, m times p q divided by m square that leads to p q divided by m. Therefore, the distribution of p hat this should be a smaller p. The distribution of p hat has a mean p, p is the uh, um, unknown to be estimated and the variance of p hat I think we should put within parenthesis the variance of p hat is equal to is equal to p q by m in the limit it goes to 0. So, p hat is called an unbiased estimate and so in this case p hat is an unbiased estimate as you can readily see as you can as you can readily see the 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 estimate has no bias therefore the 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 estimate p hat as given in here is unbiased so that's an um, important attribute of this particular estimate so you can think of z as a set of all observations. So, I, I would like to go back to the structure of the estimator the so what is that we have the, the, the observations are z 1 z 2 z m that is the vector that is given to us that is z p hat is equal to a function phi the estimator of z in this case the function phi is essentially the average of the components of z i is equal to 1 to m. So, this estimator which is given by the average is an unbiased estimator. So, that is the fundamental concept of unbiasedness and is and, and, and so unbiasedness is one of the properties of this particular estimator. Why unbiasedness? We are often interested in mean square errors 
in 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 the in the estimate x hat of x. Let let us go back to x being the unknown, x hat being the uh, estimate of that. So, what is the if x is a constant, if an estimate, the expected value of the square of the difference, the expected value of the square of the difference is 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 called the mean square error, the error in the estimate. So, now I can add and subtract E of x hat to this expression inside then I can combine this two and combine this two that becomes a plus b whole square that becomes a square plus b square plus 2 a b. So, you get the result of 3 terms again we have used the sum of the expectation the, the, the expectation of the sum is the sum of the expectations. Now, I am assuming x is a constant to start with. So, x, x bar is a random variable if I took the expected value of x bar with respect with the sampling distribution this also becomes a constant. So, this minus uh, x is a constant. So, the mean square error in x hat is given is, is given by e of x hat minus x whole square that is what we have been discussing. Now, since E x hat minus x is a constant if you look at this particular term this particular term in this particular term this second factor is a constant I can take that second factor out as a common uh, as a factor out. If I took that out in here we are left with E of x hat minus E x hat if I distribute that E operator inside it becomes E x hat minus E x hat that is 0. Therefore, this term with the coefficient 2 in this expression becomes 0. Therefore, the mean square error now is simply the sum of these two terms this term as well as that term. The first term is called the variance of x hat that comes from the fundamental definition of a variance variance is expected value expected value of the random variable minus is expected value whole square. So, the first term is the variance the second term as we can readily see from the definition of bias if E x hat is minus uh, is equal to x is unbiased the in this particular case what is that we have this is we have and and, and when x is a constant E x hat minus x is a constant. So, expected value of a constant is itself therefore, we get that term equal to the second term equal to the square of the bias. So, now you can see the impact of uh, in, in impact of bias on the mean square error. So, bias is something bias square is always positive. So, mean square error in the estimate is equal to the variance of the estimate plus the square of the bias since bias is always positive the minimum value of the mean square error happens when the bias is 0 and the minimum value of the bias possible is equal to the variance of the estimate. Therefore, when the bias is 0 the minimum squared error is equal to the variance of the estimate. Therefore, minimizing the mean square error is equivalent to minimizing minimize is, is minimizing the mean square error when there is no bias is equivalent to minimizing the variance because mean square error becomes a variance if the bias is 0. This is one of the reasons why we are always looking for unbiased estimate. Minimum variance estimation is one class of estimation that we will deal with and and and, and that relates to derivations in Kalman filters. Means minimizing the mean square error that is another criteria that comes from again um, 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 estimation theory. Therefore, mean square error criterion is one thing minimum variance error criterion another thing these two criteria coincide when the bias is 0 and, and, and so these two problems become one and the same if the bias is 0 and that is one of the reasons why we are always motivated to, 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 to find estimates with bias 0.
or unbiased estimates. Now I am going to go to so, so far we have talked about the role of bias unbiasedness and, and the reason some of the reasons for seeking unbiasedness. And, and when the when the bias is 0 we also saw mean square error is equal to the variance. Now I am going to go to the next attribute of the estimate called relative efficiency. Let x a hat and x b hat be 2 estimates of the unknown x. We say x, k, x a hat is more efficient we say x a hat is more efficient than x b if the variance of the estimate x a is less than the variance of x, x hat b. So, x hat a is, is one estimate x hat b is another estimate. Suppose somebody gives you two estimates of the same unknown how do we compare? First we compute the variance of these estimates please remember these estimates are random variables a random variable has a distribution hence it has a variance. So, each of the estimates being random has an associated variance the one estimate with the lesser variance is said to be more efficient than the other. The ratio the variance of x b to variance of x a is called the relative efficiency of the two estimates. In a coin tossing experiment let us assume I have one estimate which is p hat I, I think it is smaller p hat p hat. So, what is p hat? p hat if you remember is equal to 1 over m times summation z i i is equal to 1 t m. So, this is going to be my first estimate x hat a my second estimate x hat b is z a itself there is one observation. So, what is that I am going to do now? I am picking two estimates one is the average of the observations arising from m tosses second one is one observation itself. So, you can see the differences in the sample size used in this estimator. It is a simple exercise to show that the variance of p hat is p q by m, but the variance of z i is essentially p q. So, for every m greater than 2 for every m greater than or equal to 2 this inequality variance of p hat is less than variance of z i any one observation that means the mean is more efficient than the single observation. I think this is a very fundamental result. So, if you are trying to estimate more the merrier you have more observations you take the mean of a large number of observations if the number of observations becomes large there is a theorem called central limit theorem even though the average is a random variable as the number of samples becomes larger and larger the sampling distribution becomes a delta distribution centered around the unknown p and that is the very well known result and that result is borne by is, is at least the essence of the result is borne by this, this, this uh, example. Therefore, we are always whenever there are different possible choices for designing estimators we are going to be looking for estimators that gives you estimate which are unbiased and more efficient. More efficient means the variance of the estimate is small if the variance of the estimate is small the confidence of the estimate is larger that is why relative efficiency matters that is why the efficiency matters. Now a question is that a so the question is this if one is more efficient than the other it behooves us to ask a question is that a most efficient estimate I want to think about this now if there is a possibility of improving if there is a possibility of improving the variance of the estimate there is a fundamental interest in asking a question is there a, is there a most efficient estimator or is there a most efficient estimate. The answer is yes one of the theoretical ways in which one can establish this most efficient estimation estimate um, estimate 
is by resorting to a technique called maximum likelihood estimate. This maximum likelihood estimation technique was essentially introduced by Fisher. So, Fisher assumed I am I have an unknown x which is a deterministic constant. I have observations the observations are going to give you estimate and I would like to have an estimate which is unbiased which is relatively more efficient. In fact, I want to have an estimate which is most efficient that means, there is nothing else which is more which is nothing else which is more efficient than the one that is given by maximum likelihood estimate. So, that is the theory developed by Fisher uh, uh, well over 100 years uh, well over uh, uh, several decades ago. Question 2 could it happen that the biased estimate may be more efficient than the unbiased estimate again the answer is yes. Now look at this now bias is one attribute of the estimate efficiency is another attribute of the estimate these are two different uh, uh, attributes. So, we need to ask ourselves when we try to design estimates to uh, estimate the unknowns in a data simulation problem we need to be aware of the following question that what is the underlying uh, uh, what are the underlying properties of the estimate we so generate is it unbiased does there exist another estimate which is more efficient than this what does it take to be able to generate the most efficient estimate is the most efficient estimate is always a linear estimate is it a nonlinear estimate is it is there a possibility that a biased and a, 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 a biased estimate will be more efficient than an unbiased estimate. So, these are all the class of question that statisticians have worked around and, and developed a beautiful theory I am trying to provide a snapshot of some of the fundamental underpinnings of this theory because of its intrinsic interest in uh, 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 intrinsic relation between estimation theory and data simulation theory. Now, we come to the next property which is called consistency. Consistency is again another fundamental attribute. Please recall that we have seen x star I uh, am sorry x hat is a random variable. If x hat is a random variable there is going to be a probability distribution which is called the sampling distribution of x hat. Let us assume the sampling distribution comes like this. So, this is this is a sampling distribution we talked about the method of generating sampling distribution in the context of coin tossing in 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 the previous slides. So, what is that we are looking for let this be the x that is unknown x hat is an estimate the x the estimate is random we would like to ask ourselves the following question what is the problem. So, this is x I would like to consider an epsilon strip plus or minus epsilon this is x minus epsilon this point is x plus epsilon. If you consider this strip if you integrate the probability density from x minus epsilon to x plus epsilon that is going to be a total probability mass under this curve. So, the probability that the absolute value of the difference between x hat and x that is the probability that I have pictured here and uh, well I, I, I should not say this is epsilon maybe may, 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 may I, I, I think this is a bad notation I, I will change my notation a little bit please forgive me this is not epsilon because I have let us assume this is x minus delta and x plus delta no I will go back to epsilon sorry uh, no no I am I am I am that is right sorry I will go back to epsilon that is right. So, x hat could be x could lie in between x plus epsilon and x minus epsilon that is correct my, my, my original uh, 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 statements are right that is correct. This probability so, the, the probability within the, the hatched area is 1 minus 
the probability outside the hatched area probability outside the hatched area hatched area outside the hatched area. So, I would like to ask myself the following question when will what is the probability that my estimate x hat will lie outside of an epsilon band around x a that is the question. That probability is given by 1 minus the probability that it will lie inside. If this probability were to tend to 0 that will happen only when the probability of the hatched area is closer to 1. If the probability of the hatched area is closer to 1 is becoming closer to 1 means what? The probability distribution becomes more and more peaked. It was originally like this, then it becomes like this, then it becomes like this, then it becomes like this. So, we are looking for a thin narrow region around the unknown within which the entire sampling distribution the probability mass resides. So, that outside of this thin strip the probability mass is 0 that is what exactly this this the relation tells you. As m tends to infinity what is the m? m is the number of samples I am I am as I increase the number of samples my estimate x hat as a random variable finds itself in an epsilon strip around the x with probability 1. What does it mean? The probability of my estimate lying outside the epsilon band that means x hat minus x is greater than epsilon it goes to 0. If the sampling distribution satisfies this property that is what is called consistent estimate. That means, as the number of samples increases my, my estimate becomes closer and closer and closer to the truth and the probability of it being not equal to the truth goes to 0 continuously as the number of samples goes to infinity. That means, my estimator becomes more and more closer to the truth. In the probabilistic language this has a very special connotation or a, kind of a special name this is called convergence in probability. So, what is it what does it mean the 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 the, the, the estimate x hat which is a function of the number of samples in the limit as m goes to infinity as m goes to infinity lies in a region which is very small that means, it lies at this the probability of this goes to 0 the limit the limit the probability is 0. If my estimate had satisfied this property it is called consistent. So, consistent estimators are very natural choices Conver so this is called convergence in probability of x hat to x in the probabilistic language. So, consistency of an estimate is another fundamental attribute. So, we have seen three attributes biasness or unbiasedness, relative efficiency, efficiency, most efficient estimate and then the third one is called consistency. So, what are we looking for? We are looking for consistent unbiased most efficient estimate is what we are looking for that is the that is the ultimate goal from a statistical perspective. Sufficiency is 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 another criterion. We are not going to go too much into the discussion of sufficiency. is a little bit more technical. Conditions under which a chosen random sample has enough information to obtain the required estimate. That's related to the sufficiency. In other words, does the chosen sample that is used to estimate has sufficient information to provide you good estimate? Under what condition such sufficiency can be guaranteed? is a very technical condition I am not going to go into the details one of the most uh, uh, thorough discussion of all these attributes biasness unbiasedness relative efficiency uh, maximum efficiency consistency sufficiency all these properties are discussed in great detail in one of the classic books 
on statistical analysis by Professor C. R. Rao published in 1973 it is a classic book linear statistical inference and applications and, and, and um, in my view anybody who wants to do data simulation especially in the statistical arena should have a copy of this book in their personal library. It is it's a bible with respect to most of the fundamental statistical principles and their applications. Now, I am going to continue with my example. Let mu be the unknown, but constant. We are simply concerned with the coin tossing experiment again. Uh, uh, mu is the unknown, zi is equal to mu plus vi. In this particular case, uh, we are assuming vi is 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 normal. I think it should be normal. Vi has a normal distribution. Uh, vi's are independent identically distributed what does it mean I am uh, there is a box random number generator out of that box I can continuously keep asking and it will deliver a random number the sequence is v1 v2 v3 and so on these are independent these are independent in the same sense that if I am trying to toss a coin the, the results of the tossing of a coin are also independent. Uh, so, that is what is uh, I did not uh, what is IID first I refers to independent the samples are being independent. The second I refers to the fact all these samples are drawn from the same distribution the distribution does not change from one drawing to another drawing. So, IID in independent identically distributed is one of the standard assumptions used in estimation theory to start with. So, this is very similar to the the coin tossing experiment, but not quite the same because in the coin tossing experiment the events are 1 or 0 head or tail, but in here I am assuming there is an unknown mu I can observe the unknown through z i z i is equal to mu plus v i v i is not a discrete no, uh, is, it does not take two values this uh, v i takes um, um, v i has a continuous distribution Gaussian 0 mean and sigma square as the variance. So, if I have a bunch of m observations what is the estimator estimator is in this case we call it z bar z bar is the average of all the z i. So, this is the formula for the estimator and the estimate is z bar by uh, by taking the expectation of z bar using the fundamental principle the sum of the expectations is equal to expectation of the sum one can readily verify E of z bar is mu hence this estimate is unbiased. So, this is this is an unbiased estimate much like the average leads to unbiased estimate in the case of coin tossing as well. In this case we can also compute the variance of the estimate please remember the estimate is an random variable this is equal to the variance of the average the variance of the average is given by this formula by invoking to the standard definitions of uh, variance from basic probability theory a little calculation will reveal this variance is given by sigma square by m. Please remember in the case of coin tossing experiment it is p q by m in this case sigma square by m very similar. So, you can readily see the variance of the estimate z bar which is the average of all the z i is 1 over m times the variance of a single random variable which is sigma square. So, as m goes to infinity sigma square over m goes to 0 that means the variance of the estimate becomes closer and closer to 0 that means the sampling distribution becomes peaked if the sampling distribution is peaked that is called consistency. So, this estimate the average of all the observations is simultaneously unbiased is also consistent. So, this is the reason why we say well if you want to estimate something infinite uh, 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 it is it is it is it is asymptotically it is it is it is it is going to converge to the, the exact value, but you may not be able to have the the resources need to do uh, uh, unbounded number of experiments. So, if you have a large sample using large sample if you take the average the, uh, the average arising out of large sample is unbiased and also reasonably good efficiency it is also consistent depending on the number of depending the, uh, 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 the efficiency relates to the number of samples you have. 
so you can see y average is a, is a, is a, is a, is a good uh, is a good uh, estimate we have also seen in 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 our in our static inverse deterministic inverse problem average is the best least square estimate for example we, you remember you may remember the, the following experiment suppose i want to estimate by weight i make m measurements in m different scales or m measurements on the same scale at different parts of the day so i have m measurements which are all look different I would like to be able to have a best estimate of my weight. Our least square theory tells you the average gives you the best least square estimate of your weight given that you have m observations, m independent observations of your weight. Same thing in here. The average of the observation gives you the, the an estimate which is simultaneously unbiased and, and, the fish, uh, and, 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 and its sampling uh, uh, variance goes to 0. So, so it is it is it is it is asymptotically very efficient it is consistent is unbiased example 3.22 continued in the previous example uh, exercise we assumed mu to be known uh, mu to be unknown so we estimated the mu now i'm going to consider the other part of the story let us pretend mu is known I do not know sigma square. So, let us go back to the problem. Please in here z i is equal to mu plus v i mu is the unknown constant v i is the is the noise with the 0 mean and sigma square is the variance. So, I can formulate several different estimation problem knowing c is, uh, assume I know sigma square I estimate mu that is what we finished. Now, what are we going to do we assume that I know mu but I want to be able to estimate sigma square that means I have I know an unknown I know the observation is unknown plus some additive noise the additive noise has an inherent um, uh, variance I do not know what the variance of the additive noise is my, my goal is to be able to ev um, estimate estimate sigma square what is sigma square sigma square is the variance of the noise in the measurements I would like to be able to estimate sigma square under the assumption mu is not. There is one more version of the problem mu is not known sigma square is not known. So, you can see there are three kinds of problem sigma square is known mu is not known estimate mu. Mu is known sigma square is not known es estimate sigma square mu is not known sigma square is not, is not known estimate both of them simultaneously. This is a very classic example every student in statistics generally go through this the aim of this exercise is to be is to is to is to is to acquaint ourselves with the fundamental principles of properties relating to estimators and estimates namely unbiasedness relative efficiency asymptotic efficiency consistency and so on okay so let us concoct an estimator for sigma sigma square if i don't know the variance i'm going to have an estimator which is sigma square sigma square hat. So, z i s are the observations I know mu from basic probability theories the, the, the variance must be expected values of the square of that. So, what am I going to do I am going to take the average of the sum of the difference between z i and mu that the, so z i minus mu is the error it is the sum of squared errors it is the average of the sum of the squared errors you can see the, the 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 least square principle comes in here also in um, 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 the underpinnings of least squares you can see here also. But sigma square is 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 a random variable because zi is a random. So expected value of the estimate sigma square hat is expectation of the sum is the sum of the expectations. So by applying that simple rule, it can be verified that the expectation of the estimate is equal to the true value therefore, this estimate is unbiased. I am not going to prove this it can also one can also compute the variance of this sigma square it can be shown that the variance is 2 times sigma to the power 4 by m as m goes to infinity this variance of the estimate goes to 0 that is consistent. Here there are lots of uh, a homework problem in here. I would very strongly encourage you to use simple 
uh, uh, principles of basic statistics and probability theory to be able to compute the variance of this. So, this is the random variable it is the mean it is the variance please compute the variance and verify um, I am I'm, I'm hitting at all the major major uh, conclusions some of the derivations I am going to leave it as an assignment for you to be able to do. I think it is a worthwhile assignment to be able to check whether you understand some of the fundamental principles involved in calculating these quantities especially sample moments and, and, and properties properties of, 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 of analyzing the properties of sampling distributions. So, in the previous case what is that we have seen? If mu is known sigma square is not known I can estimate sigma square I have an estimator which is unbiased and consistent much like the estimate for mu. Now, we are coming to the harder case I do not know mu I want to estimate mu I also want to uh, uh, estimate sigma square I also want to estimate sigma square. So, when mu is known sigma square is not known the estimator for sigma square is called sigma hat square when mu is not known sigma square is not known I am going to call it sigma bar is the estimate of mu I am going to call s square as, a, as, as the estimator for sigma square. So, this is the x square is the estimator for sigma square c bar is the estimator for mu that so z bar is simply the average. So, how do I estimate the variance this is the sample value if I had if, if mu had been known I would have used mu here, but mu is not known I am going to use the sample mean in here I am going to compute the difference square some of the square difference average value. So, this is an estimate of the variance when the mean is not known this is the estimate of the mean given a particular samples. So, I do not have any truth I simply have to rely everywhere with estimates whatever I have. So, from basic principles of the definition of variance it can be real it can be it can be verified that E of z i square is equal to sigma square plus mu square because you already know z i is equal to mu plus uh, mu plus v i I am sorry mu plus that is v i v i. So, from here we get this formula we also can compute the expected value of z square the square of the average it can be verified that is given by this that is given by the uh, uh, formula 4 again it very simple calculation from basic probability theory and statistics. If you take a good course in probability theory a good course in basic statistics where you will do all these computations uh, in, 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 in detail I am assuming many of you have taken courses of this type if not this is a motivation for you to be able to learn some of the fundamental principles of estimation theory. I think you can use this as an excuse to learn something you probably have not had an occasion to learn. So, given so I am building all the basic uh, 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 ingredients now z bar s square e of z i square e of z bar square all given in 4. Now, I am going to ask myself what is going to be the mean of the estimate of the variance and that is given by this formula again it will take about 5 to 10 minutes for somebody uh, uh, to derive this, but I would like you to go over the detail use the expressions in 4 to do this if you simplify this it becomes this. Therefore, the estimate of e square uh, 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 e of s square is equal to sigma square by m plus mu square. Look at this now the actual value of expected value must be sigma square. Therefore, s square is a biased estimate s square is a biased estimate and 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 the and the bias is given by minus sigma square by m the bias is given by minus sigma square by m. I can also compute the variance of E of x square that is given by this the variance is is given by 2 times a minus 1 by m square times sigma to the power 4. 
So, you have you have I think that is an error here. Uh, so, this will get cancelled with this that is correct. So, this must be sigma square sorry this must be sigma square that is correct that is right sorry for the error that is sigma square. Therefore, if you consider E of S square minus sigma square that is equal to minus sigma square M and please remember that that is the bias. So, now you can readily see I have an estimate which makes sense, but that estimate is a biased estimate. So far we have seen unbiased estimate for the first time we are seeing an estimate which is a very natural estimate, but it turns out to be biased. Uh, it is it, it has a it has a variance the variance is given by this expression. Now, if you let m go to infinity the bias tends to 0 the bias tends to 0 as m goes to infinity. The variance also goes to 0 as m goes to infinity. So, what does it mean this estimate is asymptotically unbiased, but finest samples is biased, but this is asymptotically it becomes consistent. So, consistency and 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 biasness and biasness with respect to finite samples infinite samples. So, what happens asymptotically may not happen for a finite sample. So, in statistic there are always two types of theories finite sample statistics and asymptotic analysis. Uh, the, the, the asymptotic analysis are rather easy than finite statistics we generally derive conclusions for the finite sample statistics by looking at the asymptotic analog of the finite sample statistics to be able to judge the impact of not having infinite number of samples. So, that is very clearly borne out by this 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 example. Here again here again I have I have two kinds of estimates now the the variance of s square sorry the the variance of x square from the previous uh, page is is given by this the variance let me let me go back the variance of sigma square is 2 sigma to the power 4 by m sigma to the power 4 m this is the variance of hat i believe okay i'm sorry this is hat. So, this is one estimate of the variance this is another estimate of the variance this estimate of the variance assumes mu is known this estimate assumes mu not known we already know when mu is not known this estimate is biased we know this estimate the, 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 when mu is known the estimate is unbiased. So, the variance of the estimate is given by this the variance of the estimate is given by this this is something extraordinary the unbiased es estimate has a larger variance than the biased estimate wow that is a very nice interesting property. So, what does it mean the 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 unbiased estimate s square is an um, 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 the, um, sigma square is the sorry sigma square hat is the unbiased estimate this is the biased estimate. So, the biased estimate is more efficient than the unbiased estimate when it comes to the question of variance. So, here you can you have to see uh, uh, the choice of estimator what are the given conditions under which you, you design the estimator what are the knowns what are the unknowns all these things matter in the design of your estimator which spits out the value of the estimate. So, the properties of the estimate very much related to very much related to what is known what is not known and how the estimator is designed and we have to deal with the properties of the estimate from many of the different dimensions biasness efficiency relative efficiency consistency relative efficiency tells me which one is more efficient than the other. So, we simply cannot say unbiased estimates are the only thing that is of interest we have already seen if an estimate is unbiased the mean square error is equal to the variance. So, minimizing mean square error is equal to minimum variance that is an advantage of unbiased estimate, 
but if you are interested in the overall efficiency of the estimation you cannot rule out the possibility of introducing a small bias in the estimate to be able to get more efficiency. So, it all depends on what your ultimate goal is when you want to be able to estimate the unknown. With this we come to the end of the first discussion on the design and, and other properties of, of, of statistical estimation. I would like to ask the reader to verify all the relation the variance expressions I had given and I would like to very strongly encourage you to be able to derive these from the basic from the basic probability theory and statistical uh, experience you may have had. And the next slide provides you a couple of very good references. Uh, these are some of my favorite. Melsa and Cohen 1978 decision estimation theory is a small book published by McGraw Hill is an excellent book largely tailored to engineering audience especially electrical engineering audience within the context of communication theory estimation and so on. The book by Sage and Melsa is another wonderful book uh, estimation theory and its application to communication and control. Again it is tailored to electrical engineers and communication engineers. I coming from an engineering background I particularly like these two of course uh, the, the, the book by C R Rao is the ultimate bible when it comes to question of, uh, of, of, of statistical principles and, and, and techniques. With this we conclude our discussion of the properties of estimates. Thank you.